हरे कृष्णा फ्रेंड्स आई एम गजानंद अग्रवाल फ्रॉम काउ ग्रेसिंग डॉट कॉम टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न हाउ टू मेक बैम्बू हाउस विथ वेरी फ्यू टूल्स एंड इन फ्यू आवर्स एंड अ हाउस विच इज सस्टेनेबल वेदर प्रूफ फायर प्रूफ एंड ऑल्सो नेचुरल विथ ऑल द नेचुरल एलिमेंट्स एज मच एज पॉसिबल वी आर विजिटिंग हफ्ता कांजीबूंग दिस इज द एंट्रेंस ऑफ द प्लेस uh for the world bamboo manipur festival which happened in 2019 this entrance is also made of bamboo you will see how beautifully it is designed and we'll show you the close up so this whole video of almost uh, 200 minutes uh we have uh, filmed in few days but when you will see the film you will see in a in a very different pattern what i have tried to do is i have tried to put all the best clips of this whole workshop in the beginning part of the video so once you see those clips which are important and if you like it more then you can stay on and watch the entire video and the same things you will understand in more details there are many parts to this video there are three different kinds of uh, bamboo houses uh, you will learn how to make and one is a bamboo house uh which is a uh, round shape uh and uh, it is also uh made of bamboo splits the most common thing among the entire all the houses is the bamboo splits this uh, split uh bamboo pieces are used for making all the types of houses we see here and the first round house we saw is only the splits are used and a wire is used for connecting the splits and that's it and it is a very nice house and can become a house for staying also uh, but it's not weather proof rain proof it's not rain proof but it is weather proof the second type of house is uh, which is plastered after the strips this uh, bamboo splits are weaved then the mud is plastered on them to create a weather proof uh, effect and uh, that we will learn that we have learned from peter ji uh, who will teach us in this uh, video and the students are actually making the clay for that plastering of that mud you can see here something then the third is uh, another kind of roofing uh, which was very unique to see and that was jute cloth was used so one part of cement one part of sand was mixed and uh, 10% 10 to 15% of fevicol was used and to make a paste and that liquid paste in that the jute was uh, cloth uh, was put now they are putting that jute cloth only they are just roofing the cloth so this roofing you can see is basically cement and sand and fevicol uh, dipped uh, jute cloth and this will become the roof of the structure and over that they will do a, a thin layer of lime plastering also and this how it will become weather proof that is rain proof so this three different houses when we learned and when we saw them we realized that all over the world people who are homeless or poor you know for them this is a very good concept in technology because like some few of them can just make their house you know and uh, even if they, we were taught different techniques to make it sustain longer so that was also part of it so it's your choice how you make it how you design it because bamboo can bend bamboo can uh, you know it's flexible so this is what it is and in the all the processes you understood that splits are important here so there are very simple tools for splitting the bamboo and that process we will start first pablo will teach us how to split the bamboo and then uh, further all the other processes we will learn from different different students and teachers in multiple interviews and talks and uh, also uh, 
suggestions so first we will understand the manual part of the processes with manual tools and also we will learn uh, the technological part there is also technology available to do things faster so that also we will see at the end of the video uh, with the help of rohit agarwal who makes machines to the same process faster so this is what we are going to understand here the kids are making a dough with the clay here we are seeing the bamboo bike skill also so this uh, dough will be plastered and uh, it will make it waterproof the house so please uh, stay tuned till the end if you like to learn in details we will also host this kind of uh, workshop and also much better house making workshops at vedik heaven jharkhand soon with the help of the teachers here who agreed to work with us and also teachers who have been doing similar kind of house making so stay tuned keep in touch with us through our whatsapp number and we will update you more on this so we hope that you will enjoy this whole workshop film and hands on training and i think after watching this video you might be able to start out quickly and make your structure in, in, on your terrace or maybe on in your garden and it is so simple it's really simple you have and we have gone to very minute details by taking a close up of all the connections how they are put you know everything so we have tried our best to film as detailed as possible so that you don't need much help after watching this video so let's pause the video and we hope you will learn hari krishna in that sector they can make a nice little but the blade doesn't change much it's a style over there you can open a little bit if you see the hand is like a pipe with, with knives and you have splitters that was in half in four in five and six and as many uh, splits that you need okay um the basic concept is that you have to run the bamboo through the splitter in order to split it okay but when you're doing it by hand it's a little bit more tricky and there's, a, there's some secret to it so the first thing is that bamboo as you know has the internodes which are the strong part i mean the weak part and the node which are the strong part so if you want to start splitting you want to start splitting something that is soft so you don't want to start splitting from this end that has a node because it will be very hard you want to start for something that is easy to split like that end over there okay and also it's very important that the bamboo runs through the center of the splitter and for making sure that that happens you want to start from the thick end because if you start from the thin end it can go to one of the sides and then it falls off but if you start from the thick end the same geometry of the bamboo will guide the splitter all the way to the center okay what we use with that splitter in particular is we need three or four people that will hold the bamboo in position and somebody will knock it on the back with a hammer okay uh, the blade itself is not a sharp blade because you're not actually trying to cut the bamboo what you're trying to do is to separate the fibers the fibers of bamboo are very strong but the bond between the fibers is very weak that's the weak end of the bamboo that's why the bamboo is split easily okay so what you want to do you don't want to have a sharp blade you want to have a wide blade that will separate the fibers yeah. So if you go and see that from the close, you'll see that the blade has a pipe on the back. So the blade just gives the start and then the pipe will make the separate the fibers. And that's the main concept for bamboo splitting. You're not cutting the bamboo, you're just pulling it apart. Okay? And we can start splitting maybe one of these. And we can try there so if we can open this area a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's go there and have a look to what they are doing. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Thirty degree. अब 
the chainsaw? Got a bow. Just bring, bring the saw here to cut the tip. When you cut another noodle, keep on going. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Stop back, so you can open that way, please. Everyone, two meters to each side. I don't have to go and run with this, okay? sandwich of split that we attach to these loops with wire and then we put the bamboo splits in between and tie them with wire as well. So we start using double splits that are a little bit stiffer, we sandwich them and tie them with wire and we put them and we start to create some triangles. The triangles will give the stability to this structure and if you see the wheel it's just hundreds and hundreds of triangles so the more splits we put we start dividing a triangle into two new little triangles. So the more material we put, the stronger and stiffer it gets. This is kind of has the way. We need a density something like this. So this should be split in half. There should be another one here, another one there. But already you can see that if we give this a shake, it doesn't move much, and the little bit it moves, it moves all around. So the stretch has been evenly distributed in the whole structure. That means that all those little connections, even though they're not very strong connections because there are so many of them, creates a big and strong system. And that's how this structure is working. It's a laminar structure, it's an envelope, like a basket, that acts as one thing. They are not primary, secondary, and tertiary elements. These are only a homework that give us the, the shape. Once we have the shape right, we just whip. We don't use no wire, we just tangle all the strands. And that's how this structure is being done. Um, we have a, a bamboo scaffold in the middle to reach the high parts and using the ladders and we're starting a new circle here and tomorrow we'll start a new circle over there and we'll intersect those bolts to create different spaces with different densities of width so when you walk inside you can have different experiences so maybe a little one could be for one or two people to hang inside maybe you can have a big gathering a circle and play music in this big one it's a flexible structure as we were talking at the beginning Architecture um, traditionally tries to do structures that last long time. Good for a church, good for a temple, good for something that really gathers all the community. But for a small enterprise, you know, to build a building that will last 50 years, if the company probably won't last 10, or you know, or, or you move there and the family grows and it's too small, you have to move to a different house, new family comes in, knocks half, the, half of the walls and wants to do something different. So we're starting from the base that everything is... So okay. More, 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 more people, more people, more people, is it please? More, more, more people, more people, more people, go, go, go. Oh, yeah, you, you can more, 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 more people. We can, we need people more. Because we are all... <coughs> oh, okay. Okay, I, I can explain better. Like this. Okay. So first, the scaffolding, no? Because we don't have steel scaffolding, so we all is bamboo scaffolding. Okay. We we rope, we put all the scaffolding. So the step one for this construction is the foundation, okay? You see, we don't have nothing now in the foundation. We don't have concrete now. It's empty. So first we made three the principal elements for the structure. The middle, 
these forms, okay? And after, we put inside of the of the bamboo, you can see, after, time, we put some, some rebar, some rebar, which we turn and we, well, with a mix of cement and, and, and sand, okay? So we put inside the steel, and after we put, Okay, uh, when we do break up into groups, we'll, we'll probably do like like 30 over there, and 30 here, and 30 with me, and 30 with Martin, and a bunch with me them, so that we can, it's easier for me to work like on smaller groups, because what I want to do here on this on this pavilion, we base this, we, the, the influence here was the cocoon of the butterfly. So, uh, and butterflies also work with natural fibers and they also work with mud and they work with fiber and mud So this back wall we made these 45 degree on one side the, the splits and on the other side We made the splits go in the opposite direction. So the idea here for the mud is we're gonna make this whole We call it the waffle this back wall is we're gonna have two groups one on each side We're gonna make the mud mix in the back and made a little swimming pool where we can pour the mud and the fiber so we can step, and then we're going to start. Uh, in English, it's called waddle and dab. I don't know what you call that technique yeah, in India. Yeah. Yeah. Waddle and dab. So we're going to do for this practice here waddle and dab. It'd be really nice if we had some cow manure. That would make a really excellent mix. That's how you get what Martin was saying: the the minerals, the ligament that comes from the earth. The cow also eats this and comes out as a, as part of the the what's in the in the dung. So dung is a really, really important ingredient. And also when we make paints, when we make finishes, the dung from the cow or from the horse or from the donkey. In Mexico, we use the female donkey because the female donkey, she will eat everything, but also we want her urine and her menstruation and these things, all these chemicals have a chemical reaction with the, with the clay that's in the earth. And all it does is make things stronger. So the horse manure makes adobe or earth mix eight times stronger for against erosion, against rain and floods and things like that. Eight times stronger. That's a big difference. So tomorrow we'll we'll do the the sun's going down and you guys are still gonna go here. We can do some bamboo work on this, some weaving. Martin wants to show how to make these splits, the big splits, which is the, the bamboo open. It's different from putting it through the and uh, <clears throat> but tomorrow we'll start mudding this whole wall and the idea is to make a nice beautiful mud wall with windows and we'll do some like artistic details uh, and that's um, and then you'll see like the sun will hit it all day and we can like experiment with, uh, with you know, just to get an idea of the temperature and if we have time we'll do like a rough finish and then by Thursday maybe we can do a fine finish and maybe Friday we can leave like a very beautiful, like a like a dentist office, like a very beautiful wall if we got the time. We just, it's very dry and the sun is hot so we'd probably be able to do some fine work by So you make a stone foundation okay. and a nice wood roof or bamboo roof and uh, it lasts, I give my clients 500 year guarantee. But on for this bamboo roof. No, well, yeah, I use I put grass roofs. I, I make grass roofs on all our projects. We have grass roofs. It's a green roof. A green roof. We make green roofs, adobe walls, and stone foundation. And then you can give them a 500 year guarantee, no problem. Stone foundation with this how? No, but remember these are just experiments. This yeah. is not a house. I understood. Yeah, this is just a complete. But uh, yeah, this is a could you tell us uh, how we can use the base as the uh, foundation as the stones then how we you know yeah you use stones and then once you're like 30 40 centimeters away from the mm -hmm. floor you can start your adobe or waddle and dab or you can do you need to but do you need to seal those stones or we'll make it you can use you can use mud to put the stones together also lime can be or lime or yeah. cement okay it's a random rubble machinery i've made homes with no cement i put the stones with mud and I made the walls with mud and I used wood and then the only artificial thing was the plastic for the grass roof for the, for the snow, roof. Rain and it's nine years old and it's perfect and it's in the jungle in 
without compromising on any kind of structural strength. And that's what we wanted to show. So bamboo, breaking the challenge of cement and concrete. Now, what is the durability without maintenance? Uh, 25, 30 years, if the bamboo was treated. But bamboo, unfortunately, is not treated here. But hmm. otherwise, I've been doing buildings for more than 20 years. Our grandfathers have been doing for many years. But uh, our buildings, I can vouch, it can, it will be as... How you as treat as uh, in general? Pardon? How you treat in general? We have been using the boric borax treatment so far. And that is generally used by architects across the world. At the moment, that's the safest solution we have. There's another one. Uh, Indian Wood Science Institute has come up with a cashew nut oil, yes, but that does not work for external. Uh, you know, when you do treat your bamboo with cashew nut oil, it, it doesn't uh, remain. You know, it leaches out okay. in the external conditions. So you have to be very careful about that. So and uh, this treatment, you know, we also try to take all the all the. We do not soak it for one month or something like that. We have not uh, done more than 48 hours and our buildings, none of them has powdered so far in 20 years. So yeah, that's I, we can be quite confident. About maintenance, that. as far as maintenance, what should be done? No, we don't maintain. My house uh, is uh, with mud and lime and bamboo and 10 years I have not repainted anywhere. Okay. I showed yesterday and bamboo yeah. is like wood. You use wood in your houses like mm -hmm. windows and doors and things. Yeah. yeah. Bamboo is the same. In as much, as much treatment you have to do or maintenance to your uh, doors and windows, same with bamboo. Not, not nothing more than that. It's not required. How much time it takes to treatment? Uh, we don't use more than 48 hours, but there are some people who keep it for months together. Uh, I, I have used it for uh, in 48 hours and we have used it for 20 years. <laughs> None of my buildings has powdered so far, so I think we need Good enough. For toxic than uh, boric borax. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's, it's also more expensive. No, even boric borax we are doing for all kinds of applications. Yeah, the, there are other things also. You have internodal injection, which we do not give to every bamboo. If there is a bamboo which is going into the soil, then what you can do is you can do a hot and cold treatment in which the two feet of the bamboo which is going below can be uh, you boil the oil, which is like a cresset oil, or uh, uh, you know use up uh, your engine oil or something like that, and you put your bamboo. Uh, in that and it's boiled. When it's boiling, just remove the heat. The bamboo soaks the whole uh, oil. And that bamboo, if you, even if you put it in an infested soil for months together, nothing happens to it. Yeah, no insects. First, so, you have to heat the bamboo. Yeah, no, no, heat the bamboo in the oil. In the oil. In the oil. Okay. Yeah. And then you remove the heat and allow it to cool for 24 hours. At, at the boiling yeah. point. At, at the boiling point, you, you just remove that. immediately. Remove the fire. Remove the fire. Uh, so, suppose you want to do a bamboo tight, which is completely exposed. You can use the same process, boil the tile in that. It will remain like that, nothing will happen to it. Yeah, yeah. We are designing in a very commercial aspect. So what, like, what we can do for the fire protection of the building? You don't need to do anything. One thing is that the treated bamboo is generally fireproof by itself. Like for how much time? No. It is only the dry bamboo which catches fire. It is not this, this bamboo has to have 15 to 20 percent moisture content when you are doing a building and you have to seal it with some kind of a sealant sealant means the paint or whatever finish so you have to understand the finish is not to give color or anything it's a protection and that that is number one number two bamboo has got silica and i don't know how many people yeah you are aware silica is a is a material used for fire retardant used as a fire retardant so silica chars when it starts getting hot the char the char which forms over the bamboo it it stops the fire to going for, from going outside to inside the bamboo and that charring process happens in wood also because of this wood and bamboo are as good or as bad as steel or concrete when the fire situation is there though any industry because they are producing steel and cement would not want to publish this result but this has already been done by CBRI Rurki. I, I was there in last year in September in Ajwal itself. We had a we had a presentation by the person who is doing the fire auditing of buildings, and he showed us that at, at some kind of a temperature, steel completely fails, but wood and bamboo will still remain there. It will not collapse. So these these documents can be used for getting fire from many buildings. Yes. Yes, yes, why not? We are trying to do that. Bamboo uh, temperature catches fire by 500 degrees centigrade. There, there, we roast, we roast, uh, we bake rice in bamboo now. 
Mam ma actress that's why bamboo everywhere. Yeah. That's why we bend the bamboo make different shapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. Once it, it bended it will be remain there. 500 degrees centigrade. It is not inflammable. As as the perception is a dry bamboo yes it is inflammable. But then dry even your wood can catch fire or something like that. But not otherwise. So bamboo that way the silica outside the coating that you have is actually retarding the fire you know, or protecting it from the fire to go inside. So that is the it's a myth. Now, is there a particular time frame from where how you cut and after uh, after how many days you use, can use it for construction or something? Actually, I do not cut. Okay. It's very difficult for us. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, now the bamboo has been uh, taken out of the forest resin mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. and so. still the plantations we have not been able to get very good bamboo for ourselves so we buy it from the normal bamboo bazaar and bamboo market and we get it from there and they they get from some plantation they inform us because we have been working for 20 years they know the kind of bamboo we want so whenever they get good bamboo they inform us and we uh, we get it and we treat it and we keep it ready for our construction generally we do like that yeah generally what species you use for the construction बैम्बू बाजार में स्पीसीज बोल के तो नहीं मिलता है यू डोंट गेट इट बट जनरली बैम्बूस है बैम्बोस स्ट्रिक्टस टॉक्सी टूल्डा जनरली वी गेट दीज इन इन बैंगलोर टॉक्सी इज मोर एंड बैम्बूस है बैम्बो बैम्बूस है बैम्बोस इज स्लाइटली क्रूकेट या स्ट्रिक्टस वी हैव द स्मॉलर वन विच वी डूड यूज फॉर पर्लिंग्स एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट बट अदरवाइज या we just get the bamboo and we just use it but if you say generally in india bamboo sa bamboo and the dendro kamra is strictest in number 1 in in uh, availability completely all over the country generally next is bamboo sa bamboo yeah, both are very good for construction and then you have stocksy tulda balko or some some uh, you know some parts of the country you get proper one otherwise they are heavy for construction the gauge so it becomes inefficient to do the construction so it is like that Thank you man this crystal do you have any sort of logic or we can do randomly uh you can do randomly as long as it follows the same line mm -hmm. and no two go parallel okay Yeah okay and here we go. And you you we need to tie it. Ah uh, no actually it's okay because we don't need more and more and more and eventually it will all hold everything. Don't you think it will uh, if you know uh, tension if the tension will increase don't you think it will go oh. Um no because the tension if we weigh from all different directions mm -hmm. uh comes from all sides at the relatively the same time. Okay. So it shouldn't push it up. We do this with the beginning ones mm -hmm. just to make the shape of the frame so that now then we can do the weaving we're doing now. Okay. And what we're doing up the now the here we have the end position. So we we will left it here or we need to start from there. So what was that? That you know piece of that. Yeah, it's stuck here, right? Yeah. After this, we need to start from here or something. We might, or we might leave it. Might. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll do, we'll, yeah, we'll do it. Okay. So. Up there. Yeah. Okay. 
Why do you think about this? Why not here? Uh, we will eventually fill that, okay, but at the moment I'm trying to fill a... A particular section? Yeah, because there's a section that looks a bit flat on top. Okay. So at the moment we're starting here just with the aim of arriving at a particular point up there. Okay. Yeah. And what about this bed? We're measuring the height of... Yeah, this is so that the radius is the same on the whole structure. Okay. And so, I mean on the top also. Yeah. Okay. Always it will be same. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Then so be... what happened here is we discovered that some of these the radius is not is a little bit too short. You see? So how you bring that down? No. So we put putting new ones on that are bigger, like that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have. Hey. 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 Yeah. So I need.
Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Yeah. 
Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Oh, 
You were doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're putting all the stress in one point. By doing this, you're distributing mm -hmm. in a larger area, so okay. it's stronger. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this one, because it's all in one try, if I lose it and try to put it again, it will break. break correct. You know. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Let me try this out. Next step. Next, always. Oh, could you explain that not again? So that the next part doing <laughs> you left handed right yeah okay that's fine don't have to place more okay. now keep them together then turn it inside <laughs> right okay yeah so any other side doesn't matter you're you right handed or left handed left handed so do it to the other side <laughs> you put the put the wire there okay yeah now you spin no 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 you fit you're doing that you have to be there Perpendic you see perpendicular to the wires, to the tail, perpendicular to uh, like this. Okay, okay. Now, so when when you get there, you just turn to the other side, you know? Okay, yeah. Cool. Keep on going like that. See? Screw the, screw it up. Yeah. It's better to show us again. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. looks very super easy, but yeah, it's yeah. really not bad. You see? Mm. When you cut these tails, we usually don't cut the wire first. We work with the roll and we feed as much as we need, so we don't have to waste too much wire. And then you just give it a hit so they go inside so people don't harm themselves, okay? So now we do this one. Yellow hand, yeah? Yeah, this is okay also. Push. Push. Push, push, push. You wanna work? Push. I'm not allowed. Okay. Not allowed to work? Why? We are allowed. Because I didn't hate. Push. How much more I learn? I I allow you. Okay. Yeah, we we are yeah. okay. okay. You just have to get a pair of gloves. Okay. You're not allowed. You just have to get gloves. Push, push. That is a beautiful thing. Oh, thank you. Come on, pull a bit. Pull. Oh, is it correct? See. The first you have to make a cross. What is it doing? No. The first you have to make a cross. Push. 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 It's a new one. It's a It's not good. Not good. Not good. It's too big. But look, that's all right. Yeah. Let's do it again. But it's better to practice on the ground, more comfortable, you know, because yeah, you're, yeah, it's already yeah. difficult and by, doing, so it step step, that's by step. doing it in an uncomfortable position, okay, we, we pull it, okay, yeah. you make a simple okay. twist, okay, Okay. you put them together, you put your plier there and bend it so these two come in the same direction as that one, okay. and then you spin, when you spin you're creating a plane, right? Okay. Spinning any object that you spin creates a plane. That plane has to be perpendicular to these three ones that are coming this way. Okay. Thank you. 
passer, and then you've got it. Everybody, a little louder with your heart. This is a Taiwanese Thai technique. Mm. They use in Taiwan. Okay. This is from Taiwan as well. Mm. Do you use a similar wire? Thinner. Okay. It's too thick, so you don't need that. Okay. It's just to hold the shape. It's not required. It's not required this thick, no? Huh? This thick is not required. We use uh, usually 1.5. 1.5. This is probably 2. Yeah. Little, little, little. Or you can use one mil and you use it double. So when you do it double, look, I'll show you. It's a different technique. And they're only good for you. Okay. Look. I'll show you. If you want to do something like a, str a stronger connection, mm -hmm. you measure you measure once yeah. there, okay. and then you make it double. Okay. Then you go through the loop. Mm -hmm. Through the loop. Then you wrap around and you start twisting. See? It's very similar to the other one. But with this one you can put when the starting is a little different. Yeah. When you start the knot it's different. Different. Yeah. Why don't you show one second please? No, oh, but it's, it's in the camera, no? Yeah. Okay, we're running, we have really little wire at the moment. Okay. okay. Then there's also another one you can do to connect to crossing pieces. That you go. I don't want to do it now, but you go. Still be mostly on the crisscross on the mid top of the section or something. Yeah. 
It's hard because these pets are floating in the sky. You know? Can you hold this? Hold it, hold it firmly, okay? Go like that. Now. Then you cross over. Cross over. Should I help you from here? That's fine. Just hold this one. Okay. I'm gonna go over here. Uh, it's the same principle. Hold tight. Quite strong, yeah? Yeah. 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 Record who I get record start here? No, you had to get the photo, photo, photo. Photo, you want to yeah. Really? yeah, only click. Give me yeah. the just, the... just... Hare Krishna. You have to slide it. Which one? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Oh. That's good, keep going down. That's good. Click code. Oh, I know where you are. I need to put in my foot for you actually. Leon, sir, thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're not concentrating, we need it. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Okay, push. Are we going? Push. push. Just instruct us. Dam laga ke. Hai sir. Ha, dam laga ke. Hai sir. Okay, we're at the end. So stop. Yeah. Stop. Can you tuck it in? Can you can you tuck, tuck it? it in. Tuck it tight? Yeah, it's done. Just a bit. Okay. Can I go forward or backwards? Push, push. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. 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 Uh, this this house, this uh, structure, can last for how many years? Uh, well, it's not a permanent structure. Still, right? the rain and the the sun is gonna break it. out of this the bamboo. But, but it will last. Uh, I don't know, like three years, standing you, if, there. But it could you, last longer standing. It will just some parts will can crumble. Call, crumble exactly, but. But we can cover it with some other material and yeah, then it can even last. Yeah, plastic, one. even a mold or like a a palm tree leaves or oh. yeah, I guess you could cover it. This one's not gonna be covered. It's yeah. the idea, like Juan Pablo was saying, the story of the three pigs house. You can tell us again. Yeah, so it's uh, one pig being this house of 
bricks. One pig built his house on wood, and the other built his house on uh, palm leaves. So when the when the air came, the hurricane came. The only guy that had the house it was the wooden one. No? The bricks fell down. The, everything fell down. And because this one has gaps, the wind passed through it. It's not. It's never gonna fall down. <laughs> it's something like that. I mix it up. It's okay. Good. Push. Push. Public no planting paid participant. Karo minute karo kuch. गेट नहीं होगा तो अंदर कैसे घुसेंगे लोग हम एक कलू में लगा रहे आज कुछ है नहीं खास हम लोग के घर हम भी निकल जाएंगे उस समय We need to pull it a little bit. Yes. Until we get clean material, okay. When you finish, you check the other side. If you see a branch coming out, this one doesn't have any. Yeah. You clean it, you know. Okay. Branches are uh, like this, okay. So for example, something like this, when we're weaving, will get stuck and will make it very hard to weave. So that you clean as well the same the same way, okay. Just like that until it gets very. Very sharp. Smooth. You go the other side. If it doesn't, and it's smooth, okay, it's good. Okay, always with gloves, always away from your body. Okay, and then try to make sure these guys are running here, so make sure you're not on their way. Come this way, and then make a pile of all the finished material. Okay, and you can do this sitting down on the ground, so you don't have to be standing up. How long? How much time it is taking to build this house by four people? Let's assume. Huh? Making this dome. Yeah. Yes, we have four people. How much time it will take? I don't know. Depends the people. So if they are walking, then and then. It depends the people. Depends the experience of the people. These four guys will probably take a month. My uh, team yeah. will probably take a week. Definitely. You know. Yeah, but depends if you if you can get the splits already split or you have to do everything from scratch. Yeah.
एक नया बम्बो स्प्लिट कर हम रेकॉर्ड करेगा प्रभु जी You can fade it back in at the end that way. Yeah. yeah. It's not as low as you can, but it should absolutely be pulled in all the way and then you can move back. This London people. A bit hard. हाँ गोबल में आ इधर इधर फोल्ड हो रहा है हाँ किनारा खींचो दोनों साइड से अब एक चांस ना ना बस बस आप क्यों चल रहे हैं वो हो गया बस हो गया हो गया नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट के लिए इसको फोल्ड करो नीचे छोड़िए डाउन one one second. Uh, can you just pull it to the side? Yeah. Okay. Clear your mind. Oh, we have this guy also. He'll have to do with that guy. This need to be cut it down. Ah, we'll cut it down. Yeah. 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 गोपाल भाई ऐसा बांधना पड़ेगा ना बांधना पड़ेगा of this mixture starting we put the 13 at least 13 of cement and sand, sand. Three, yeah. you are mixing fabricol also fabricol also but how much that is uh, no with the experience actually we have put that required, required. Yeah, required. Yeah, it is required, required. 250 at least start mixing you know you will ah. be having experience over yeah. how much it should be there how so, how you you know understand that this much is enough for i need to add some more how that's why by doing it only oh, you must have some you know Maybe one, maybe one by three. 
one by three. Wow. Mm. For cement water mixing, uh, one ratio you can mix it. Okay, that means three, three times of cement and one time okay. of vehicle. Sand. Sand plus vehicle. Yes, sir. Oh, one packet Let of um, uh, three cement. Three packet of cement and one of packets of cement. Uh, now we should start from again. Okay, one three. packet cement. Yeah, yeah. Three packet of uh, sand yeah. and one packet of vehicle. Yes. From that we can start. Then we can understand uh, later. Okay, this is the only. You can, initially, you can add no. We can add one point five cement also. Where we can more uh, stuff. We can be there. More thickness will be there. To stick okay. it Do we need to put something more here, or this is enough? No, no. I have knowing only about this knowledge, so okay. you have to ask us people. <laughs> okay, thank. You. Till then, I know this. <laughs> okay, then we need to tie all these things. Yeah, this we are binding. Okay. Again, same thing. Yeah. This also binding. Yeah. No? Okay. गोपाल भैया ये पतला पतला है चलेगा ज्यादा मोटा करना चाहिए इसको नहीं पतला पतला नहीं ये सेम साइज का है पानी कितना देते हो पानी जो है कि इसमें 20 लीटर पानी दिए फर्स्ट में कितना सीमेंट दियो सीमेंट 25 के जी दिए बालू 75 25 के जी अच्छा हाफ हाफ बैग उसके बाद में 250 ग्राम फेविकोल दिए अच्छा शुरू से बताओ कंफ्यूज हो गया तो पहला नंबर की हमने बालू छननी करवाया हाँ। उसके बाद में जो है कि जमा किए उसके बाद में जो है कि हम गटर बनाए त्रिपाल से उसके बाद में सपोर्ट उपोर्ट नहीं अच्छा पहले से बता रहे सर लोग आकर के हम लोग को काफी हेल्प किए सब मिल के काम कर रहे हैं मिक्सिंग बताओ हेल्प तो हो ही रहेगा मिक्सिंग से पहले हम दुकान से ये खरीद ये नहीं बताया फर्स्ट नंबर हम तो बेंगलोर से आए ये सब नहीं नहीं बताए बताए चलिए सीमेंट दिए एक बाल्टी नहीं एक बाल्टी नहीं सीमेंट पच्चीस के जी फेविकोल ढाई सौ ग्राम बीस लीटर पानी उसमें से थोड़ा हमको कम पानी भरा तो फिर पाँच लीटर पानी दिया पानी डाल देखे उसको मिक्स किया उसको पूरा मिक्सिंग किया सीमेंट जो है कि डाल दिया कौन सा कंपनी है पता नहीं नहीं वो वाला तो नहीं है बांगुर सीमेंट सस्ता नहीं सबसे अच्छा सबसे अच्छा यहाँ का पता नहीं यहाँ का जो इंचार्ज दिया हमको पता नहीं हमको सीमेंट से मतलब मतलब ये कितना इफेक्टिव होगा नहीं पता इधर दे दो और इसमें बंद ये तो छेदा हो गया बारिश नहीं गिरेगा फिर उसके ऊपर और एक लेयर चढ़ाएंगे क्या वी विल सी जनरली इट डज नॉट ओपन मोर इफ इट ओपन मोर देन वी जस्ट फिनिश इट विद थिंग एंड डू अ लाइन मोर फिनिश विद दिस लिक्विड 
बिकॉज होईन वे टाईंग नाही हो ना नाही वायर है ना नाही स्ट्रॉंग वायर नाही स्ट्रॉंग पॉइंट इज नाम दिन में हम तो थेंगे दे इधर आ रहा है ये माइन तो हम ने वो ऊपर जा रहे हैं इधर से बांध रहे हैं भैया इसको मत बांधिए इसको फिर डबल करके बांधना होगा अमन ना मुंह हाथ पालो है ऊपर ले फोगा ना आज जो खाने का खाला आ गए हैं इधर से सर आ गए अरे गोपाल भैया ये जो छेदा छेदा हो जा रहा है उसके लिए क्या करेंगे डालना पड़ता है तो ये जो मिक्स है उसको डाल देना पड़ता है अच्छा डालना पड़ता है अरे ये जो छेदा हो गया अच्छा इसके ऊपर कुछ लगेगा क्या बने चूना लगेगा you know when we should understand that mod is ready he'll tell you he's been here for the last half an hour you know maybe kar sakti hai haath chhod ke batao bhai phone pe ho jao free ha bata jaise abhi na kuch kuch hum ye jab ready ho jayega na to fir kuch test karenge pehle thoda sa utha ke uski ball bana le बॉल को नीचे मारा मतलब आपने वेस्ट हाइट से ऐसे नीचे छोड़ दिया अगर तो फप करके वो फैल जाए तब वो तब चलो फैल जाए तो इट इज टू वॉटरी वॉटरी इट शुड स्टैंड सम वॉटर ओके एंड फिर उसके बाद आप उसके बाद आप उसका एक कैप्सूल टाइप बनाते हो लंबा सा एंड यू होल्ड इट लाइक दिस If uh, if it stands uh, horizontally and firm, mm-hmm. then it is good. If it uh, starts to fall, it has too much of mud content. The fibers, the fibers and hairs will keep it st- uh, steady. Guru ji, confusion. बताइए बता पूछिए. ये इसको कैप्सूल बना के एक हाथ में पकड़ना है क्या? एक हाथ में ऐसे पकड़ना है. अच्छा. दो फिंगर. अच्छा ये अंदर में दबना जाए आपका कहना है. नहीं नहीं ऐसे just पकड़ना है उसको. हाँ. Hold it. वो मिडल से पकड़ोगे ना इतना लंबा पीस बन जाएगा मिडल से पकड़ोगे तो गिरना नहीं चाहिए ओके लफड़ा नहीं चाहिए व्हाट इज द रेशियो व्हाट इज द रेशियो ऑफ दैट हां और मैं तो अंदर आ जाता हूं दिस माय न्यू असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ओके तो प्रोफेसर रेशियो ऑफ द काउडंग एंड मड एक्चुअली काउडंग एंड मड नहीं इट इज क्ले एंड मड क्ले एंड वो क्ले एंड मड इन क्ले एंड मड actually these are both uh, same thing on their where i get the clay on their core 
बट इट इज जस्ट अबाउट द साइज बोलने तो दे पहले कुछ से ज्यादा सिर्फ सिर्फ उनके साइज में फर्क होता है उनके ग्रेन के साइज में जो लोअर पार्ट होता है दैट्स द क्ले जो नीचे से निकल जो ये वाली मिट्टी है ना वो मड है रेत है बेसिकली रेत और मिट्टी वो रेत है जो कंस्ट्रक्शन के लिए यूज होता है तो मड चाहिए अपने को 70% और जो मड मींस ये ये सेंटीमेंट मींस जो जो फाइन वाली चीज है अरे भाई वो जो मिट्टी और बालू पर रेत खत्म रेत चाहिए 70% और जो उसकी मिट्टी चाहिए हमें 30% 70% सैंड आइडियली लेकिन हम 50 50 कर सकते हैं 60 40 कर सकते हैं लेकिन आइडियली 70 30 का चलता है 75 25 का मिक्स 70% 30% 30% 70% 30% मतलब ये ये हम मिट्टी को क्ले बोलते हैं आपने उल्टा पहले आपने उल्टा बोल दिया सैंड सैंड इज 70% अरे भाई भारतीय भाषा में बात करो सबको समझ रेट 70% हां 70% रेट बड़ी तो कम डाली है अभी अभी ये ज्यादा है और वो कम डाली है ऑलरेडी बीच में डाल दी थी पहले वो सिर्फ ऊपर से भरी है जो जितनी कमी लग रही है वो लग रहा है ये उल्टा होगा और ज्यादा होगी उनके अंदाजे में चल रहा है ना ये एक्सक्यूज मी यू आर मिक्सिंग ऑल दिस सैंड एंड वाटर यस थर्टी परसेंट क्ले थर्टी परसेंट क्ले एंड सेवेंटी परसेंट सैंड देन दिस मुसाफ एंड नो 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 सिमिंग राइट नो सिमिंग नो सिमिंग नो सिमिंग नॉट डंग काउडंग प्रेफरेबल है कि डाल लो लेकिन उसमें क्या होता है कि क्रोजन नहीं होता वाटर क्रोजन हटाने के लिए होता है वो रोकने के लिए मतलब क्रैक्स उसके ऊपर प्लास्टिक डाल दियो ना खत्म प्लास्टिक से ही तो बचने के लिए ये सब कर रहे हैं मतलब अगर शायद सीमेंट भी डालो तो फिर होगी तो उससे क्रैक वो सब नहीं होंगे वाटर इरोजन नहीं होगा हां वाटर को वो थोड़ा बाहर फेंकता है कितना हाउ अबाउट काउडंग एंड वो नहीं बता स्ट्रॉस हाउ अबाउट काउडंग काउडंग एंड स्ट्रॉस ही इज नॉट टोल्ड अबाउट काउडंग एक्चुअली वर्ल्ड इज वन दैट मेड विद पीपल सेटिंग ऑन It's not only the process of the foot, but it's also the energy of the human being, the memory, as I said yesterday, being registered in the earth and in the water that you're stepping on. <laughs> and you see, no one's having a bad time. Everyone's like having a good time. So it's positive energy going into the earth. Abhi aa jao. Okay, the first thing we'll do is a little ball. Squeeze the water out. No, just make a little ball. Mine's already pretty dry. Okay. Your sits dry. Remember, we're having fun here. If if this was professional, we would like but we're just having fun and things aren't perfect, but that's not the point. Okay, so I'm going to drop it from my uh belly button down and if it were to crack like this everywhere it's because it has too much clay if it was to do like this it's because it has too much sand the fact that it stayed together means that it's good the proportions are good okay that's the first test sorry sorry if you have a crack then there's no clay yeah what about this that's perfect that's perfect 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 yeah it's all fine right all fine remember what i said if it was if full of lines it's cuz it has too much clay if it like becomes little pieces it's cuz it has too much sand that's the difference sand look This is sand. If I squeeze sand, look, it doesn't stick together. When I squeeze clay, it stays as a ball. So it's the clay in the sand that is keeping this together. Right? Sand doesn't stay together alone. It needs the clay to become a ball. Yeah? But there's only 30% sand and sorry, sorry, sorry. 70% sand to 30% clay. That's the ideal mix. So I said before, if I was a little ant And I look at an adobe wall, I will see a rock wall. It's basically a rock wall because sand is a stone, it's a little baby stone. Okay. <coughs> so the next test, I squeeze it. Open my hand. If it was too wet, it would I would feel the water here. If it was too dry, it would fall apart. So everything's fine. That was fine. And then now we test for the tensile strength of the fiber. And we make this shape here. 
and I put it on its side and you can see if it, if it was too sandy they would crack if it was too it would it would fall apart right so the fiber what's working here is the fiber so this is a great mix this is a really good mix and we did it in five seconds no laboratory no testing no nothing just just go for it because earth is that generous I have never like I said yesterday gone on a project and said okay sorry everybody I'm going home I cannot work here you can work anywhere on the world anywhere in the world where there's earth you can get busy all right so now everyone grab a bunch and we're going to put it on the wall basically eight, nine times out of ten the mix is okay That's ten fun. times out of ten because I always you always either add a little sand or I take you it's like cooking you can always make a cake yeah. basically you have to do it in a fun way so that it's just it's just a level of goodness good better 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 great but it's never bad okay now we need to make teams so grab a bunch and half go in the inside and half on the outside and get a partner over on the other Okay, so get a partner <laughs> okay. Grab okay. a partner. Okay. And we're going to work together right here. One, two, three. <laughs> and now we got to do the massage. You got to like wipe it out. Okay. Okay. Now here. One, two, three. Perfect. And now with your hand, massage. Massage. Make it smooth. मसाज करिए सर जी मसाज नहीं हो रहा मसाज नहीं अच्छे से करिए आप इस तरफ देखिए नहीं इधर से ही पूरा या लेट इट फिल आई गेट लेट फिल या या हियर ग्रेट थैंक्स यू वांट टू डू इट Ready? You got more? Nice, no. Mix up. Okay. No, 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 no. Go the, get from there. It's hard for us to get it. Uh, no, no. Nice and thin. Just, just the finger beyond the bamboo. It's better with so you can pull. You want to like throw it, and they can stop it on that side. Okay. Come, come, come. Okay. Come here, here. Okay. So together, boom. So you can. So if, if I do it alone, it doesn't work. Okay. No, no. Just putting okay. it in the middle. One, yeah. two, three. Here. The bay. Ready? Go. Yes. Nice. And then we massage it. Thickness should not be more than one inch or something like that. Yeah, just a little beyond the bamboo. This is a rough. And then later we make it cleaner. Later we can make it finish. Finish. Yeah. This is the first. We need three layers. We need three layers to make it a nice flat wall. The the these layers will be immediately, or we can give some space to dry it up. Yeah. Need to give some space to dry it up. Yeah. And then we come with a second layer and then a third layer. And every layer is better and better. Mere paas nahi mujhe lana padega. Dekha. How much time basically you can give it up to dry it up? As quickly as you can. Oh, from uh, you know it's the first layer. Yeah. How much after uh, how much a week or two depends where you live. <laughs> okay. If it's very dry, if it's very if it's a rainy. It need to be a proper dry or little proper bit dry. proper dry. 100% dry. Then the second layer, then the yeah. third layer. Okay. If you put a, a second layer on a wet, you have a lot of problems. It will fall apart. Yeah, and it will crack and not good. One, two, three. That's the dry. Ready? हाँ यहाँ पे भी हम बढ़ेगा। One, two, three. Actually यहाँ पे थोड़ा सा ना layering करना पड़ेगा पहले। Very good.
Oh. And when this dries, it's like concrete. Yeah. To move this, they're going to have to bring a, a bulldozer. Okay. Okay. Okay, how about you? Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can you push some girls? Yes, yes. One, okay, no. Okay, okay. 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 Ore, zamra, zamra, on both sides. इधर थोड़ा लगेगा सर। Thank you for bringing the bus. <laughs> so now, both are, both are. We are told to do the massage. Proper ah. massage is required. Massage kar kya kar rahi hai? Maza nahi aa raha. Yeah. 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 Make it a ball, kind of. Then put it together. Actually, I think that it's less bamboo. But come in over No, the below point is empty. Ah, it's empty. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Rafa, Billy, I guess you lost the sword. Why? You gotta be careful when you bring things down, then you affect other things. Okay. So you don't want to lean on it. See when you lean on it, see how it affects the whole structure. So, you see up here. So you need to be just a little bit careful. Well, what you do is just... You guys, this is not... It's pretty close. Let's just leave it, right? So, here we know already that this is not in This is... A little bit out of. A little bit out, but nothing you would... That we can do in mud. Nothing we'd see. No mud here. No, here there's no mud otherwise. Yeah, but once... Once the shape is gone, it's very hard to get back again. So you, it's very important. 
It's about shape. This is not about structure. Structure will come with the weaving. So we just want to get this as perfect as we can. Yeah. Um, you see, this is forming a triangle. Uh, uh, they're forming rectangles and squares here. This is not what we want. This is not even. It's not even attached at the same. So. We just leave this loose because we need to attach this. We might go across, uh, across here even, or across there, to form triangles. You see here. You see here. Look, we've got rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Only the rectangle. They don't. They don't. You want the we want triangles. Here's strength. See, this is strong. So we want these to form. These little triangles here, and the larger triangles even. The, Here's a triangle here, that's good. We could bring it there. Yeah, we could bring it. We need to we need to form the bring it across on, across it, each of the other um, uh, arches. So we have to remove Do we do we? Maybe we do. What we can do is one piece tied that I see. If you just put it here, mm -hmm. it we go like this, there will be a triangle. And no, then here we, we are losing triangle. Yeah. It's a crappy food. If we follow this, why don't you make it like this? He's saying there's a triangle we are losing. Oh, All right, we can cross like this. Yeah. In the workshop, uh, in the conference hall, uh -huh. you had mentioned that uh, arch architects, government don't like you uh -huh. because you have minimalistic tools for making your kinds of houses. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, what type of houses you are making, and how much duration it takes for them to like finish? What kind of houses am like, I making? Like, you're focusing more mainly on bamboo or cobs also? I make usually adobe. Adobe, okay. Yeah, usually I'm making adobe homes. And I make millionaire homes and I make low income homes. I make both. So, um, and they're both the same. There's no difference. In this America, one is this big and the other is this big. In America, I heard that uh, they don't like, the government doesn't like uh, natural houses, they have some norms. They have norms. In America, you can't use rain catchers because supposedly the rain is a federal uh, reserve. So people have gone to jail for collecting rainwater. So um, a very strict building code. It's because you can't make money with that. I can't sell you that because it's there, it's free. So they that doesn't work in the capitalist society. So uh, that's why they make it. Uh, illegal, not illegal, but they just make it difficult. You can't, you can't get a permit and things like that. Or if you want to use it, I think there's a law. I'm not sure how it works in the U.S., but um, a few architects have actually had their licenses taken away for using mud uh, building. Um, but they require that you put 10% cement in your mix. But by doing that, you ruin the whole idea. Structure, yeah. Of, like, Natural. Yeah. yeah. So, so how do you deal with this? You just don't bother with the government. Or you give them what they want to see and then you turn around and do what you want to do. Because it's all paperwork, really, at the end of the day. Okay. Amazing. How many houses you have constructed so far? Me? Over 20. Wow. Uh -huh. Amazing. Uh -huh. uh, would you like to come to India to teach uh, our friends? We have roughly... 100,000 followers on YouTube. I I run world's largest network on self-sustainability. Okay. So we organize courses on different subjects. Okay. Like Ayurveda, organic farming, mm -hmm. 
treating elements, how to treat them, you know, mm -hmm. protection, all different things. Now we are starting courses in mud, earth bags, okay. Bambi maybe. So would you be interested or will be available? Come to come? India, that was great. Anytime. So I want to ask uh, you one question yeah. that uh, what is the good duration for a student to learn something uh, professional? Yeah. Professional, maybe three months. Uh, is it possible to do an actual project, uh -huh. real-time project for uh, for a charity? Uh -huh. And uh, we could probably build a charity house in thirty days. Okay. So I have I own uh, around four twenty-five acres of land, uh -huh. just one hour flight from here. Uh -huh. And three-sided water, river, everything. It's very good location. I plan to start a bamboo university, a natural housing university, where we want to teach everything of natural housing. Okay. We also plan to start medical medicine university, where we will teach everything of herbs and diagnosis, everything. Okay. So uh, we want to make curriculum for that. Uh -huh. So we would like to. Also, help take your help. Need your help on that. Okay, sure. And we are ready. We already have the land. We mm -hmm. are we are already having students. Uh -huh. If we put on our channel that we have a course coming up, mm -hmm. we will have students. Sure. And our philosophy is education must be free. Uh -huh. Education must not be a business. Right. So what we do is we never charge students, uh -huh. but we give donations to the faculties right. because they have to leave course and this is how we have been organizing courses so far and they have been very good right. and we upload the courses like this course I mean, I'm going to upload on my channel uh -huh. and uh, so we would like to work with you on okay. this aspect if you just said that three months is a good time for professional so that three months is only for a particular type of house like adobe or bamboo or it's a mix of all no we can mix it i mean three months is like really to create a professional but in one month, you can already create a house. A house, but you can also create people to develop. It's enough for them to go and develop mm -hmm. uh, and, and learn, like like a semi-pro. You know, like okay. But but they can go on their own. They can pretty much because what you need here is just it's like I make a cake. I can teach you to make a cake in one day. But you're going to take like 10 cakes before you make it really well. Oh, yes. So I can teach everyone in one month how to make everything good. And then they need to like make it again and again and again and again and again. They don't need me there every time to say that's good, that's bad. They just need to find the mistakes. And yeah, learn. so we, we plan to uh, basically, uh, we are looking, this is what my vision is. Mm -hmm. uh, the, for our upcoming school, whether it's Ayurveda, whether it's organic farming, whether it's permaculture, mm -hmm. whether it's our... Uh, bamboo University, where we can teach everything in bamboo or natural housing. Mm -hmm. We will have uh, accommodations okay. we have to make and we need school building. Uh -huh. So everything like we will be planning and we can have a course to make that whole thing with hundreds of students okay. and something of that. Do you think it's practical? Yeah, sure. How many faculties do we need to teach 100 students at a time? How many what? Faculties means meant like uh, teachers. Yeah. Uh, for a hundred students. Mm -hmm. To teach hundred students. Like three. Three is good. Three is good. Three, four. Amazing. And then some of these people who have a bit of experience. You know, yeah, like semi-experienced semi students, technical. Yeah, like another ten semi-experienced. So three months is good for an alien to learn everything. One month is enough. Like I said, it's. Like yeah, I understand. I know. I understand that point. Uh -huh. That is a very important point which you uh -huh. mentioned. That one month you can teach everything by doing it, and then they will experiment. And they have to redo it and redo it and redo it. Of course. It and redo it. I definitely uh, need your help. You are from which place? Your name in. Uh, my name is Atula Jadhav. I'm from Pune. I'm an industrial designer. I studied in NID Ahmedabad. Um, my father is actually a farmer, uh, so we were looking into growing bamboo and uh, yeah, the dream is to sort of build a, a sustainable system that is not just environmentally sustainable but also economically sustainable because the farmers are the most impoverished demographic in the country even though India is largely an agrarian country. 
So yeah, basically I came here to explore the options and to talk to people, make connections and see if I can get some help in uh, building a sustainable model. Because uh, farmers can grow bamboo. Now farming requires quite a bit of infrastructure, like uh, if you're growing fruit, you need a ripening room, you need storage, you need uh, tools, you need housing, you need a lot of... So mostly this kind of infrastructure is concrete and steel based. So if we can so sort of build a, a, a systems model wherein the farmer can use bamboo to build infrastructure, it will reduce his infrastructure costs and uh, on the side also he should be able to figure out a more, uh, uh, you know, the... Sustainable and economical. Yeah, an economic model in, in terms of uh, to also to sell his produce, basically. So I'm looking into what I can explore for. for uh, would you be uh, like first of all, how you feel now in the last three days? Uh, it's been uh, revelatory, to be honest. Uh, to see different techniques used in building, different materials, like same material used uh, three different ways. Yeah. You see, uh, then there is. Uh, a lot of mixing of materials like here yeah. we have, uh, there's a little bit of metal a little bit of a lot of bamboo and a little bit of soil and there we have the concrete cloth and i think this is brilliant brilliant <laughs> uh, would you be like would you like to attend uh, more workshops on natural housing oh, on definitely. different materials also definitely i had actually visited uh, uh, bhuj uh, there is this place called hunar shala uh, it's uh, founded by uh, one of the founding members is uh, a guy named kiran bagela they have explored a lot of natural building materials like beaten earth and uh, i mean uh, vernacular they to they, they, do, they teach also Yes, they have a, a training workshop. That is why it's called Hunar Shala, wherein wow. they sort of train the local people to use natural uh, and vernacular building materials for general architecture. Another one is Barefoot College. Barefoot College. Another one, wow, I, okay. I know. It's good. So, what is your vision for bamboo? I think bamboo is such a versatile material. We can. It needs to boil down into the daily life of the grassroots and uh, I think the problem lies within the collective mindset because uh, the rural uh, demographic is enticed by the idea of apparent progress that is happening in in the urban areas but in reality our, our, our perception of progress itself is very warped at this point because it's I mean everything doesn't have to be industrialized and uh, we don't have to talk about efficiency when we are losing something that is much bigger I mean we're losing sight of what's at stake here so I mean I understand economic efficiency but at what cost so we need to somehow incentivize and awareness is probably the only solution so I feel like more workshops and you know more inclusive workshops is the is the key to changing the collective mindset great uh... <laughs> No, you, you have to bear mouth. Sir, you were looking very beautiful when you were making the house here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And kind of you. how do you feel by doing the hands-on? Um, I take every opportunity to do that. This is the first time. Life, this is the first time no, you've done it before. I've done a workshop in Oroville, Pondicherry. On bamboo. Bamboo and herbs. Oh, and they, they do regular. Uh, yeah, workshops. I've been I've been stayed there. So. So I've done all this, putting my feet in the mud. Making adobe bricks, <laughs> making cob structures, amazing. Compressed earth brick. Uh, do you live? In, do you have your own structure also? Like no, a, no. but I have a normal structure in uh, in Delhi. But what I'm trying to do is introduce more and more yeah, bamboo. Into it. For example, false ceilings. You know, everybody uses uh, standard industrial products, but I've simply brought in uh, bamboo, like a carpet, a like carpet, or like no, a board. Ceiling. Oh, oh, just bamboo. Just bamboo. 
Oh, so the gap between the it actual makes a very nice effect. Effect also. So, if, for example, I have a glass roof, so you can see the light through. Amazing. If you don't have a glass roof in the false ceiling area, you can put lighting. You can get very nice effect. Amazing. Uh, where is your house? But also chajas, you know, window chajja. Ka chajja. You can make it from them. Yeah, friend. I mean, it looks beautiful also. You can make pergolas. Chaya chahi aapko. During the summer, you need you have too much sun in the roof. Yes. So people use okay. You want to grow plants. So in the summer, you use uh, this green uh, netting. Instead of green netting, I'm using bamboo. Bamboo. Or kuch kharcha bhi nahi. दो हजार तीन हजार रुपये के लिए पूरा किया वेरी चीप ऑल्सो सो हाउ लॉन्ग सिंस हाउ लॉन्ग यू आर डूइंग गेरिंग इन द बैम्बू सी जस्ट नाउ लास्ट ईयर लास्ट सिक्स मंथ माई कार्ड दिस क्लॉथ इज मेड ऑफ वॉट आइटम जस्ट जूट अपना बोरी होता है वही है तो ये काला रंग क्या है मटी रंग है सीमेंट पूरा मोटर है विद फेविकॉल क्या रेशियो है इसका वन सेकंड वन सेकंड दैट आई डोंट नो दैट यू कैन आस्क सर सो व्हाट इज द रेशियो ऑफ सीमेंट एंड फेविकॉल नॉट फेविकॉल फेविकॉल या फेविकॉल 250 ग्राम 250 ग्राम एंड दिस सीमेंट 1 1 केजी 1 केजी 
that is almost yeah. a kg, right? So one three, so two fifty gram this. So one fourth is uh, fevicol and one three, one three, uh, one third. Yes, yes. Yes. One third is there. And we just do the uh, plastering. First we started with the sieving, sieved uh, sand. Yeah. Now we are mixing that one also. Okay, on this mix. There. Okay. And this will be just put on the cloth. Yeah. Jute cloth, jute. Yeah. Okay. That's enough for uh, protecting from rain, huh? Yeah. Wow. We are putting the lime on that. Uh, uh, higher, chuna, last, chuna. last is the li lime. Yeah. We are putting the chuna. Okay, after that? Huh. After it dries? Yeah, it will dry. Tomorrow you can see that. Mm. It's quite good. So inside enam enamel paint, on top of that is lime. आपने पहले किया है ये सब? नहीं। क्या सीखा आपने यहाँ पे? Mixing proportions of. So what is the proportion? One is two three. One is two three. तो one क्या है? One is cement and three is sand and aggregate. Aggregate is what? Stones. Aggregate is कपची. That. So sand and aggregate what is the ratio? Sand and aggregate दोनों मिला के one is two three में. तीनों. Okay, one 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 third of oil. Yeah. So sand one third, stones one third, and then uh, cement. Cement is one third, and yeah. it's mixed. Yeah. And that is fevicol one third. And so basically, when we made first, first one was uh, uh, quite more slurry. The second one that we made that was that had more amount of cores and okay. aggregates, so that it is more. Uh, Hard. More so hard. Has that uh, netty thing, na? so all the slurry will follow. मतलब it fell down. So uh, according to them, they said they you have to make little thick so that uh, the slurry so that all all the material will stick to the root. So that is why we are making little course now. Yeah. So you will be putting both the things, or you'll be just putting this now. No, no, we we no, put both. We will put the root like, uh, like cloth we, we here, here, and then we'll uh, mix. Lay like lay plagaenge. Yeah. You are from which place? You are from Gujarat. Which university? GTU. And you? Same. GTU is in which place city? Gujarat Technical University. From which city? Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad, huh? Great. You are architecture students. No, we are architects. Now we are architects. Already architects. So this is something new for you all. New or you already learned in? Like the new thing. This one is new. Otherwise, the structure and everything that we studied in college, but right now we are. We have ne never practically uh, implemented in any field, but now we are doing it. But you already have some knowledge in yeah, architect learning yeah, about yeah. nature. Yeah, in the college time they have uh, given us some, some yeah. very nice. Let's see what you make. Would you like to speak? Yeah. One second, I'm jada aare. Here. You're from which place? I'm from Delhi. And you're a student or? I'm an architecture student, fifth year. Okay. Yeah, I'm working for my thesis. So. This is something new to you. Or already, you have done this no, before. No, no. This is something new to me. I have done mud walls before. So mud walls. Yeah. With some uh, other organization. Walls. I had gone to Oroville. So there is oh. Oroville Green yeah. Practices. Yeah. I had uh, had a workshop there when, when I was in my second year. So this is something. It was part of your college. Or it yeah, was it was a school trip. So every year um, we went to different separate places. Like. Different sections went to different places. We had gone to Pondicherry and Orville, so that was fun. And we had learned cob uh, cob walls and how to make those bricks. So the CSCB, compressed bricks. Compressed cob. Orarum, orarum. This machine uh, bricks. No, no, we did it by our hands. So cob, cob. I understand, but did you also learn about the CSCB? No, no. They have that is in also their part of Orville. Okay. Okay. And uh, this is the second. Uh, did you work with stones also? 
No, I'm not worked with Stone yet. So this bamboo is first. Like this is the first time I'm working with understanding bamboo, learning things about it. How do you feel? I feel really nice, like really enlightened. I would. I'm, I came here for the purpose to learn as much and incorporate it in my thesis. So I have a lot of things in my mind now, a lot of ideas. My mind has opened a lot. Your name, uh, please, and then. Come, uh, I'm Aditi, and uh, my I'm doing my architecture fifth year from Delhi. I'm interning right now, and the kind of firm which I belong to is also sustainable, and uh, they work mainly for the projects which are, I mean, which are sustainable in nature. So coming here is one of those purpose to me getting involved more with the nature and uh, learning about bamboo. So uh, the experience there is pretty nice. I'm coming, I'm coming hand in hand with the material which I am pretty much aware of, and I want to get, want to know more about it and how I can actually, uh, we in India, how we people can actually uh, <coughs> make this material as one of the major components. Uh, in the build structures we are developing right now so it's nice uh, so uh, how do you feel in this bamboo workshop like so far yeah so uh, right now i'm getting to know a lot of uh, things about bamboo and in relation of other people as well because here we are communicating with other people as well we are getting to know their ideas and their point of views regarding the projects they are doing or maybe with other ideologies they have in relation of architecture and as well as I because I'm majorly concerned about architecture so I'm focusing on that but yeah so look getting to learn a lot of different stuff in relation of architecture in relation of bamboo in relation of sustainable materials so that is uh, I'm somehow gaining knowledge which I won't be I may not be able to get from somewhere else because there here the community is very big the kind of people which are coming to this area uh, they are of a wide scale. So. Amazing. Would you be attending more workshops on natural yeah, actually, housing? Yeah, actually I have previously done before as well. I've been to LBC which is in Trivendram. So there they majorly works on brick and uh, they try to do low cost housing. So this is a kind of work which I like. So. Amazing.
tomorrow maybe or on Thursday. And then we're also going to make a mud mix. So to make the mud mix, I need everyone, we, we take our shoes off and we get barefoot. And we're going to step in the mud and we're going to make a mud mix with hay. And uh, usually we use cow dung, but there's no cow dung here. So we're going to just make a, a poor mix, so to speak. Okay. Um, so anyway, so the idea is to, in the back, you see how there's the, the bamboos on 45 on either side? In the back of this, that's where we're going to put all the mud, okay? And the whole reason for the mud is that we're, we're, I want you to learn how to make a thermal wall. I don't know if you were at the talk uh, five minutes ago, where I described the qualities of mud and how they work as uh, thermal insulation against heat and cold. They work against uh, sound. It's very quiet. If you have an adobe house or earth house, it's very comfortable inside. It's always 24 degrees all year round in the heat or in the cold. It's uh, very quiet. You don't hear all the neighbors. You don't hear all, this, all the beep, 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 all the tuk tuks and all that. You don't hear all that. Um, you breathe very nicely because adobe or earth, it absorbs humidity. Unlike cement, cement absorbs humidity but retains it. So if you have a cement house, you'll see on the bottom it's all white and like, like uh, salty or moldy, like green. That's because cement retains humidity, doesn't know how to work it, and then you get breathing problems and allergies and etc. But if you live in a mud home, the mud will take that humidity and throw it outside. If it's too dry, like here in Manipur, in Imphal, it's really dry, it'll pull the humidity from the air and bring it inside the house. So your house will be nice temperature, it'll be nice humidity, it can be really dry outside, but inside an adobe house or a mud house, the humidity will be ideal, it will be perfect. That's why the queen of the termites, you say termites in India? Okay. The queen of the termites, she puts about a million babies a year. So she's a very busy woman. Okay? And she's the only woman in this whole area, in this whole city. It's a bit like Delhi, Calcutta and Mumbai together. It's about 50 million termites live in these hills, in these mud hills. Have you seen them? They come out of the ground like, okay. The queen of the termites tells her architects and her engineers that she wants 24.5 degrees all year round to make a million babies a month. <laughs> That's what she tells her engineers. And if you test a termite house, it, it fluctuates in between 24 and 25 all year round. So not only are they using solar position, if you look at a termite house, it has a solar uh, positioning. It also takes advantage of the breeze that ventilates the whole place. It also has a whole hydraulic system. So when it rains, the water goes in and goes and they have canals inside the termite house. Termite houses have been studied scientifically. They've cut them open. They've seen what the magic is. And none of them go to the School of Planning and Design of Delhi. <laughs> Not a single termite. And they know all these ideas. I come from Mexico, in our schools, in our colleges, in our universities, we do not learn anything about mud building, 0.0. .0. In our colleges, universities in Mexico and Brazil, zero about bamboo. These are things that are coming now, they are very futuristic. They are futuristic, but they are also very ancient. So basically, I'm not inventing anything, all I'm doing is rescuing tradition from the past and reinterpreting it and making it sexy again because that's what people want is something sexy right block is like hot and sexy they make advertisement for beautiful women and you buy it it's the same thing marketing it's all about like this crazy idea right so I'm that's my job right now is to make these things attractive again and not something that is being denigrated and put aside as something horrible it's really, I suffer a lot of bullying. Uh, my clients give me bullying, my peers give me bullying. So if you're going to be a bioarchitect, if you're going to work with natural materials, be prepared for fight. 
Be prepared to get a lot of shit from the government. To get shit from, from other architects and from the academy. The academy hates me. The Mexican Academy of Architecture don't like architects like me. Or Martin. I don't know about Juan Pablo. But we are not liked. But we are the future. That's what that, that because not only is this materials natural and healthy, but it's good for us. That's why we're so adamant about it. That's why we're so like die hard because we believe in the in the health aspects, in the benefits of sleeping like a baby, of waking up with vital energy. A lot of people sleep 10 hours a night and they wake up tired. You might be young, you might be 18 years old and you still wake up tired. That's because your home is not, your bedroom is not letting you sleep right. How many people have this problem? They sleep 10 hours a night and they wake up tired. Your bed is the most sacred place because you spend eight hours a day in a vertical, in a horizontal position, sleeping. So you want that to be the best place in the world to be for those eight hours. So if you have air conditioning, you have uh, negative telluric energy, you have all this, uh, 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 What's the brand of the paint here in India for painting the walls? Asian paint. Asian paint. Asian If you have Zerolac on your wall. Zerolac. N. Okay. If you have N on your wall. Zerolac. N other Nigeria. If you if you have paint, that's plastic. What happens if I grab a plastic bag? like a supermarket plastic bag and put it over his head <laughs> he'll die in nine minutes nine minutes he'll be dead it's the same thing with your room it's the same thing with the house it doesn't breathe paint doesn't breathe this plastic and paint. okay air conditioning very very negative air conditioning it has freon gas and then not only that, it recycles all the bacteria. So if someone has a cold, everyone in that room is going to get sick. Okay, so we want to eliminate air conditioning. We want to eliminate the plastic paints. And then these babies over here, these are full of radiation. I don't know if you've seen the documentaries, if you guys are aware of the impact this does to your brain. If I make a 10 minute phone call, it takes my brain about seven, eight hours to readjust my cells. And have you ever been on the phone and it starts to get hot and then you put it here and then this gets hot and you put it here <laughs> you're literally cooking your ear that's why it's getting hot it's microwave it's like the ovens this works on microwaves so anyway so if we have a mud house and you have all these antennas i don't know if that's one but near my there's one right there you see the antenna near this that thing over there the, the tower next to the city center that's emitting radiation and the first thing you get is typhoid cancer you'll start to feel dry here so if you live near one of those you either got to tear it down like a terrorist or you got to move if you don't want to get typhoid cancer if you start feeling bad here it's because you're getting radiated 24 hours a day because <laughs> those things work 24 hours a day or you build a big adobe room and then you're okay because the earth will not let that radiation in. Okay, so that's the importance of building with mud. And we'll go back to the termite, and she, back to the queen, and those termite houses are 24.5 degrees all year round. So it's really comfortable to live in mud. And I know it sounds ridiculous, it's because we're gonna use our feet. I don't need cement, I don't need tools, I don't need electricity. I don't need a machine to move it around. I just need human energy. And another beautiful thing is that architecture has memory, right? I'll give you a very well-known example. In Germany, not in Germany, in Poland, we have Auschwitz. You heard of Auschwitz? It's a concentration camp that the Nazi Germany built to kill all the Jews and homosexuals and communists. Okay, they killed I don't know how many thousands of people in this one place, like a farm. It's a, it used to be a farm. 
If you go there today, you can't even get to the gate. You already feel nausea. Some tourists vomit. Some people can't even go into the place. And it's just a farm. It's just architecture. But it has memory. Architecture has memory. It's like a haunted house. Why is a haunted house haunted? Because it has energy. It has, if I, if I say to you, oh, I, I'll, I'll rent you my apartment, but I just killed 10 people in there with a machete. Would you rent it? Probably not because of the energy. So spaces have energy and spaces have memory. Okay. So if you live in a place that doesn't let you sleep or everything's uncomfortable, it could also be the memory of this space. Does that make sense? Are you guys following me? Yeah. So when we work with mud and we're stepping in the mud, not only am I taking the radiation out of my body because everyone's wearing plastic. Everyone, everyone has plastic on their feet. Everybody, everybody. So you're not letting the radiation go. You're not grounded. If anyone here works with cable vision, is there any TV installers here? Okay, if you were a TV installer, you know that to make cable vision, you have to put a ground wire. Right? Same with the human body. I have to make contact with the planet Earth to get this radiation out. Otherwise, all this radiation stays in my body and it becomes dangerous for my health. Okay? So when we play with mud, we release this energy into the mud, but it's a happy energy because stepping in the mud and dancing in the mud makes you happy. Because the same things that are in happy drugs like Prozac, which is an antidepressant, are in mud. So you're going to be happy, you're going to sleep like a baby, and you're going to be healthy. And everyone here wants to be healthy. I don't think there's anyone here that wants to be unhealthy. Right? And everyone is getting sicker and sicker. And I've seen friends, I've, I've lost friends, I've lost family to cancer and to other diseases. And, and that's why I'm so uh, aggressive, if you will, or adamant about working with mud. And that's why I don't, I don't do block. I don't do any modern materials because I do not want anyone to suffer any more suffering. There's enough shit going on on the planet that, we, that the houses have to be healthy. Okay? Do you agree? Yes. Okay, are you all ready for some mud building then? Are we, got, we got the energy, the, like the, the juice is flowing for some mud building? Because it gets dirty. If you get dirty, you're going to get muddy. And you might have a problem. Yeah, you might have a. You might have a problem with your workers in Mexico. Uh, the bricklayers. When I say, "Okay, guys, we're not going to use the tools. We're going to have to step and put the brick, put the adobes," they like, "Oh, architect, you're crazy. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn into a homosexual if I start playing with the mud." Seriously, they think. They think they're going to have like a gender change if they, if they play with mud. So I'm serious, this is, a, it's actual, this is actual fact. They think it's, it's, it's not masculine to work with mud and stuff. But I say, okay, you want the job, you got to step in the mud, you got to do the mud. After about five, ten minutes, they're like, oh yeah, woo, we love it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't go back. So it's a nice little process. And I hope that all of you, we're a lot of us, so we might break into groups or something, but I hope you all have this positive experience and that when you go build and when you go think of your next home or where you want to live, that you think about mud and you think about bamboo as options for living. Modern living. I'm not saying you got to live like a, like a headhunter in Nagaland and, and eat like crazy insects or no. If you can build, I build luxury homes. I build very luxurious homes, I put beeswax, I make a mud wall, then I use very fine clay and color the walls, and then I put beeswax and I polish it and it looks like marble. And people think I put cement, or that it's amazing, it's beautiful, very beautiful. So you can make very quality things. You can make a Maharaja house, no problem. Okay? Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention was... Um, no, I think that's it. So, uh, Martin. Okay, thank you, Peter!
Okay, the mix is Juan Pablo Pinto. He's from Chile. He's director creative of Cape Urban. So please, say hello to Pablo. Well, hello everyone. Um, in Cape Urban is a big collective. Um, we are in an inclusive group and multidisciplinary group um, of architects, designers, artists, makers, and all sort of uh, trades. And one of the interesting things of that is that through collaboration, we've achieved big things and big, big uh, structures by sharing the knowledge and by inviting artists from other parts of the world, learning their techniques, sharing our own techniques, and growing the bamboo community. So that's kind of our main, main line of work. Uh, we are five of us here now. Um, I'm architect slash sculptor. There's a journalist. Um, there's a visual artist. There's a media artist. And we all joined by bamboo, by making. And I think uh, one of the beauties of this material is that it's easy to work with, you know? It's light, it's flexible, it's natural. Um, can you come in front of me? Yeah. Hey, everybody, come, come. Yeah. 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 Okay. We, can, we can move more. Yeah. And we can so, take seat if you want. Everybody, move more. This side, for this side. You know, my back is hard to, <laughs> hard to listen. Yeah. You so everybody can take seat in front because you have the sun. Mm -hmm. Very difficult for you. Yeah. So we can put more people here. <laughs> so what what we've been doing in the last five to six, uh, so five to seven years, is large uh, art installations in the city. So we go with the community. Um, we learn. We teach them how to work with the material. We go to the forest. We harvest ourselves. We usually work with green material. Uh, we split it ourselves or work with the whole post or bend it and we use very simple tools we just use pliers wire hand saws and that's pretty much it and we build very very large structures and uh, i think one of the beauties of of this sort of work is the actual process of building and it goes beyond the the actual thing we're building it's, it's to do with human relations it's to do with when you work with somebody next to you you get to know him you get pissed off, you get happy, you laugh, you party. And going through all that experience in a couple of weeks, it creates really important bonds. So the structures we build, um, they usually break down in three to four years because we don't treat the bamboo, we don't want to use chemicals, um, we don't cover it with a roof, we don't put foundation and lift it from the ground. So we do everything that we shouldn't do to build with bamboo, let's say. Um, because we're not focused on making it last, we're focused on making something that is different something that creates an impact in the community, that creates bonds, that uh, builds teams, and that creates something that transcends the architecture itself. Architecture is, is temporary, you know? A building will last 50 years, or you'll design a building for offices and can end up being a, a dwelling, or you design something with a wall, and the next owner will knock the door and change it. So that mindset of building something that will last forever is something that is not, that, it's not that like that, you know? Things change, things evolve, and you build something with concrete to last 50 or 60 years, and probably they will knock it down before time to build something else because the land value went up and they want to build something with more stories. So we're starting from the idea that everything is temporary. It's a matter of how, how long would it last, but it won't last forever. And we work with the material as it comes. So bamboo matures in four to five years. We cut the bamboo, we build with that. It will break down in around four years. By the time the structure broke down, the forest is already regenerated and we can harvest again. So it's a closed cycle. So we don't generate any waste. We don't generate any damage to the environment. The bamboo is a grass. When you cut the grass, it just grows greener and greener. So we're making a favor to the forest. And we go and walk, but, uh, walk into the forest and cut with hand saws so we don't damage the floor. We don't uh, scare the animals with the chainsaw. And we keep the environment nice and, and, and beautiful. What we're doing here is uh, a woven structure. Um, usually you don't weave structure, you usually have a primary structure, secondary structures and cladding. What we're doing this is a laminar structure, it's like a giant basket um, in which all the parts are contributing uh, to the structure. So it's a whole thing, it's like a giant basket, like one whole thing. And it gets very strong, As the denser it gets, the more elements you put, the stronger it gets. And this is very small for what we usually build, so this could be 10 times bigger. And the interesting thing is that you can build it with your hands. And the, the outcome, you know, after working for a week and realizing you build like a, bus, a, a really big structure, is very rewarding. So that's really good for the community. 
um, especially communities that are struggling with organization or getting projects ahead, if you make you know, an exercise of a week and then realize that in a week, from harvest to finish, they all work together. And during the process, you'll identify leaders, you identify skills, you identify different elements that can then be extrapolated to a much larger project for the community. So it's something that is some, somewhere between art and architecture, is somewhere close to sociology, is somewhere close to, to a, a something very human and, and has to do with, with the way we relate to each other. Um, you'll see um, we are splitting the bamboo with a, with a splitter all by hand. Um, and it's, it's a very fun thing to do, so really good if you gotta go into that with that. And you'll see um, the structure has one uh, main dome, we're building a secondary one and we'll build a third one. So when you get there, you get the chance to see how we start one, how, is some, how do you do when you go in the middle of the, of the process, and how do you finish it. And I think that will be very good for you in terms of, you know, in one day being able to understand the whole process. Now, if you want bamboo to last, you have to keep it out of the elements. It has to be shaded because especially the sun will break down the silicone that is on the outside. Once that silicone breaks down, it'll crack, the water will seep in and it will rot. If you, don't, if you have it touching the ground, it will rot as well. And if you're in a place that it has lots of borers or bugs, you will get eaten by the bugs unless you treat it with something. So traditionally, people treat it with borax or boracic acid, which is, is quite a, um, it's, it's almost like a table salt, so it's not very bad for the, for the health. But there are other treatments. If you want something that is exposed to the elements, you'll have to use copper sulfate, or I think they're quite nasty. So we try not to treat the bamboo, and when we do things that want to last longer, we just use the borax system, which is the more, most kind of uh, healthy, let's say. And we make sure that through design, we keep it out of the elements. So big awnings, so it's always shaded, uh, footings or rocks that lift the bamboo off the ground, and it can last a long, long time. Um, I think uh, uh, one of the beauties of working here in India is we're working with a new material for us. There's 3,000 varieties of bamboo, so every time we go to a different place, oh, this bamboo is different, this is thinner or thicker. And, and if you ask for the people here that has the skill with bamboo, they will tell you that some bamboo is good for roofing, some one is good for weeding, another for making handcraft. So I think um, as an architect or as a designer, uh, it's very important to, in, to, to communicate to the, to the person that is building, to the builder, you know, because he has the knowledge and, and you have the education. So in, in that dialogue, you're, you're transmitting what you learn and they will transmit to their, to their partner. And the other way around, you learn the skill, you learn the, about the material. And if you, if, you, if you work with your hands, you'll get a better understanding of the material. And this applies to any material. Let's say you're designing a wall um, and you say it will be a brick wall. Get a bunch of bricks and play with them. You can arrange them in different ways and, and be more creative, you know. If you're, if you're using timber or steel, why, why do you use a branch the way it comes instead of mill it, you know. So working with natural materials um, creates a big challenge as a designer because it's not something you can plan ahead for. You'll go to the shop and you can get really straight timber, really easy to plan. But if you plan a structure with bamboo and then you go and get bamboo, they're all different and they all have a curve. And the, the one that is curved or the one that is straight, no one is better than the other. If you're making a building that is actually curved, you, you choose the one that is curved. So installations that we've done, we go to the forest, we pick the ones that are on the outside of the clam, the ones that are leaning out, they already have the curve, so I don't have to curve the material, you know. So that approach is, is a different mindset as a designer, and also you need to, to, to be good at, at solving problems, you know. You have to be good at, at solving things on the site, be there, you know. If the material doesn't respond the way you, you thought, well, you have to change the design according to the material. So instead of dictating, no, this has to be this way, you actually have to listen and pay attention to what the material is telling you and design that way. And I think that's something that is very interesting and applies probably for all sort of construction with natural materials, that the first thing you have to do is get hold of it and understand it. You know? Once you understand it, that you have great potential to do very interesting stuff, very different, you know, very natural, and using mostly local materials. You know, you don't need to import bamboo, you don't need to import materials. Everything is here. It's just a matter of being creative and using what's around. For us, this is the first time working with this kind of bamboo, and usually for a dome like that, we'll probably use skinny bamboo and bend it to create a subframe and then weave it. Uh, because it was very thick wall, the splits were stiff enough to actually do a subframe and we just sandwich them and start working with it. So we change our plans when we arrive and 
uh, Martin was telling me, well, tell me, tell me what you're doing, you know, send me a design so I can, you know, do stuff ahead and, you know, maybe run the pool. I said, look, I can't tell you, you know, because it, if I tell you the dome has to be eight meters diameter and suddenly the bamboo doesn't bend that way, then it's a waste of time and energy. So the, the best thing is to, to actually get hold of it and goes to any material, not only bamboo, you know. If, if you're a designer, if you're a maker, don't, don't spend time sitting on the table drawing. Get an understanding of what you're using first and then draw from there, you know, and then you'll get a much better outcome. So I think that's what we're trying to transmit here. It's uh, community bonding, uh, have a good vibe when you, when you build, you know, be cooperative, um, listen to what everyone is doing, learn from the guy that is next to you, not from your teacher, but from, from, your, from your peer. And I think that way you create something that is a lot stronger, that will transcend the actual material and that you can transmit to the future generations. Now I want to present Nilam. Please, Nilam, say hello, Nilam! If you can stand like this. Yeah, that's, that's good, right? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hello! hello. hello. I am the bamboo architect. <laughs> so, um, I represent Mansaram Architects. We are a 31 year old uh, practice, practicing sustainable architecture and development. Uh, based out of Bangalore and with bamboo for approximately two decades. Uh, we started, uh, I started in 1999, exactly 20 years ago. And the first project itself uh, gave me so much freedom to work with bamboo because they were, uh, I was working with Plywood Institute, Ipruti, and another, fir another firm which was doing rural housing for people in the state of Karnataka. And uh, we did a project in the Raj Bhavan of Bangalore. It was the upmarket place where all the IAS, IFS bureaucrats come. And I thought that's the best way to present this very humble material to the policy makers so that it can really get to the level of, you know, where the policies can be changed to do things. That gave me a lot of freedom. And that something got me, I mean, it is a love affair, which is still uh, going on very strong. And I think there's something that you call it bamboo fight. I think bamboo grows on you, as Peter was telling today. So when you start working with the material, especially with your hand, it really grows on you. But basically why I have really stuck to this, there were two, three reasons. One is that one fifth of the world population even today lives in bamboo houses and one third in mud houses. Now, if we try to do a little bit of technology that we have and we try to take the traditional wisdom of the people who have been staying in those kind of buildings and doing those buildings, we would have solved the problem of one third of the world population in terms of housing. I think there's no UN program that can be bigger than that. And this could be done with networking. We could network with architects, with organizations, and try to transfer this kind of a data in outsource kind of a way, open source kind of a way, and this could trickle down. The second thing was in our country, I don't know whether it is in your country like that, the people who work with bamboo, they are untouchables. They are considered untouchables, don't, people don't touch them. And uh, this really touched me so much. Such a wonderful material and these people who work with them, they have kept the tradition alive of such a beautiful material and something which is given by God to us, nature. But they are kept outside the village. If you have a village here, their houses will be somewhere there and uh, they will have no water, no sanitation connection nothing. I wanted to bring those people, those wonderful people in the mainstream. This was another thing that I really wanted to do. There are two things. And then I thought that these people, if all, the, all these people, there's one fifth of the world population and one third, which are considered homeless because they don't have a pakka house of cement and steel. In our country, still, if you are building with mud and bamboo, it's a kacha house, not temporary. And if you build, the moment you put some steel and concrete, it becomes a pakka house. So you get into the statistics of you have a home now. Whether it's livable or not livable is besides the question. With all these things in mind, I have tried, I'm trying to work on a kind of vocabulary of architecture, which is based on stone, mud and bamboo. Because in our part of the world, where we have the maximum homeless people, we also have maximum bamboo. These three materials you get everywhere, whether it's in the forest, 
whether it's in a rural area, whether it's a small town, tier three town, or in a city, or in a metro, you get all these materials everywhere. If we are able to generate a kind of uh, architecture out of these materials, a new vocabulary, I think we would have solved the problem. And so I try to do work at every level. So I don't work with only with bamboo. There's another thing that I want to differentiate between people call it bamboo houses, bamboo architecture. There's nothing called bamboo architecture. It always has to be bamboo in architecture, bamboo in building. If you do a composite building like bamboo with mud and stone and things like that, then we have a case for bamboo. Because maybe in northeast people can live in all bamboo houses, but in Karnataka, in Gujarat, and other plus places you cannot live. And we have traditional typologies of buildings with bamboo, which have been you know like they have evolved over a period of years, which actually work, and they work in different kinds of ways. And we have to respect that, what I call yesterday in my presentation as wisdom. Because they were trying to solve a problem, because they had a genuine problem. They were not doing it for a PhD degree. They were doing so that they can be warm. They were doing so that they can do their house within a budget. And that's what we, we are supposed to provide. And that is a wisdom. When we are trying to work in a lab, we are trying to gain a knowledge. But we always feel that knowledge has to be given to somebody else, not applied on us. It's like you're trying to make somebody else a guinea pig. But when you are the guinea pig, you will be more sensitive towards the problem. And so these, our ancestors have done that. So we are supposed to take that traditional wisdom and take all these uh, data that we scientific data without which nobody uh, believes in you. We have to combine these two and come to a new vocabulary of architecture. And I'm not against concrete. I'm not against steel. I'm not. None of the material is bad. Material is not bad. It's us. <coughs> Where to use what material we should be knowing. How much to use we should be knowing. We cannot do a one kilometer, ten kilometer bridge with bamboo. Fair, fair enough. But we can definitely do bamboo bridges in the park. And there will be hundreds of them. So I want to talk, talk about this appropriateness of a material which as architects, as designers, as people, even as people, even as clients, when you're taking a decision what material to use, you have to keep that in mind. So I never promote bamboo to any of my uh, client who comes. Somebody came and told, oh, you are promoting bamboo. I, I was told, I said, no, I'm not. You want to, uh, you want to take a year, you decide. You go through my bamboo project, other people bamboo projects across the world. Once you are convinced, you come back to me. And then we do a project together. Unless until that happens, you actually cannot create something. You can't force somebody to use bamboo. So that thing actually has to come voluntarily. And so when the poor people have, you have tell poor people you live in bamboo houses, they will not live. Because they want always an updation which is supposed to be for something else. So that is something which you know we have the aspiration of people have to be kept in mind. So I also work in bamboo reinforced concrete. And we wanted to showcase here in this in this uh, you know international forum what bamboo can do as a modern material also. It can also do shells, it can also do contemporary and it can also do metro stations and with concrete and all these kind of things. And that's what we are going to be showing hopefully today. Uh, till till 8, we should be able to finish. We are looking for a concrete cloth, which is an absolutely new technology which you can quickly put. And when you are doing with working with bamboo, we are always faced with curves, and you have no tiles and no sheets which can actually, uh, you know, cover a sheet roof. And then you are forced with, to do with full concrete, which we wanted to avoid. So this is one uh, solution that we have tried to put it up here. So this is a shell, and I think uh, rest about the evolution of a leaf and something about the form that is there at the at the stall that I will do. But this is what is Mansaram about. And when we were working, we found that uh, no human resource, no, nobody wanted to work with bamboo. Everybody wanted to work with Burma teak. Everybody wanted to work with uh, ply. So we started doing skill development. And for 14 years, almost in 2004, I started skill development in bamboo. So we also run a lot of workshops and programs in a structured manner. We are affiliated to the Alba University Agra, from where we are doing now courses, modular courses and other courses also. And we plan to put up more than 200 centers across the country and even abroad uh, for uh, you know uh, talking about bamboo and uh, teaching bamboo at the class level. Like that. So this is all about us, and I would uh, 
you know, all of you to join this India Pavilion. This is the aspiration of India for bamboo. And I would like all, I invite all of you to join us on making this the reality. Okay, and the last, I'm Martin, nice to meet you everybody. Uh, we are from Digma today. The team, please pass here, the team from Mexico and Peru. Oh my god, the energy is good. Play down. Okay, Eduardo, Andrea, Flor, Vanessa, Lat, the Venezuela, from Venezuela too, I'm sorry, from Venezuela, Oscar, and Lolo. Where we are, the American team now working very hard for you. So please. <laughs> Brazil! America! America! And what we have not from Brazil. And Chile, well, we have more people in there. <laughs> okay? So we, have, we are a company of 11 years working with bamboo in Mexico. So uh, now I will, I will talk about the bamboo, no? What which bamboo is good for construction and which not, okay? All the bamboo is good for construction, no? Oh yeah, or no, yes? Yes. yes. On the, uh, some bamboo is for construction and some bamboo is not for construction. Okay. These two bamboos that we have here, which bamboo, which bamboo is, the two is the same, the, the, the same dimension, no? But who is good for construction? This? Okay, why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this bamboo is not heavy, check. You can take it. And this bamboo is more heavy. <laughs> when when the bamboo is a baby, one month, two months. <laughs> The, you know what is lignin? This is lignin, no? The lignin is minerals. So the bamboo when it's growing, and the, with the time it's taking with the, the earth, the lignin, the minerals. For this reason, the bamboo is like the natural steel. Because all the time the bamboo is taking the mineral from the earth, and it's taking in the, in the, in the, in the bamboo. So it's the resistance, the mineral in the bamboo, okay? So, if you see, when, you, when we have a baby, the baby is beautiful, no? And it's flexible, no? <laughs> and so, with the bamboo is the same. When the bamboo is, is a baby, the bamboo is flexible. But what happens if I put three stones very heavy, one baby? Maybe I kill you, no? I kill the baby, no? But with the times, <laughs> with the time the bamboo is taking minerals, and it's, but what happens if I put Peter, his leg in the, Maybe it's no return, no? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe still, uh, what happened? <laughs> so we love flexibility, no? It's the same with the bamboo. When it's a baby, it's a lot of flexibility, but it's not strong for construction. It's, so we need to know the bamboo. Now I want to show you something, this. I will tell you, like, we make these curves. I, I want to show how to use this. Okay? So this is ratchet. Is ratchet in English too? Ratchet? Okay. So all the bamboos have curves. So if I want very, very good, like a line, a bamboo, how can I make it? Okay? This is the process. Okay? If I, I put, for example, Oscar, I will take this bamboo, I, I will show something. <laughs> You think you can sit down because a no, lot of us can't see. Yeah. Okay, we can move it a little more, a little more, a little back. <laughs> we can a little more. I want to show, this is a technique from Georgistan. It's very good for cut. Because everybody wants to say, ah, you need to cut with a special, no, no, no. This is the best for cut, okay? But how, the technique is very important, okay? I will show the technique, so, please. Okay. I, I will do it in the two ways for you can see and you can see, okay? You're ready? Okay. One moment. I will show 
the bad process, okay? The bad technique. Fair. This is the bad process, like this, no? Check what happened. The fiber, check. Very ugly. It's not beautiful. Not clean, not normal. The And a good process. Job, you need to cut along 100, no? But if you could like... <laughs> oh, it's not good. Check. <laughs> all the fiber is in all the parts and it's not beautiful for your construction, okay? So you can cut. You can cut. You can cut. <laughs> Another point very important is if we put two points and I put the bamboo, where is the, the bamboo? Down, no? Down, right? Why? Check. Toma la de un punto. Toma la de un punto. The bamboo have a curve, okay? So if we put a scaffolding and we put the bamboo, you will see very like a line. This is good bamboo? No. We need to put three points and we can see the curve. You know? If we put only two points, we can see the curve because the curve is like what? Okay? But if we put three points, we can check. Let me put this. We can see the real curve, okay? And we can know. Put together. Are you an Oscar? Are you a Melolo? So check. One moment, one moment. Okay. So we have this. We have the curve like this, no? Yeah. Okay. So I want to make a line. I want to have a very, very big bamboo, but very, very like a line, not like a curve. Because I need to be, imagine one client with the construction, no? And the client, oh my God, it's curve, what happened? <laughs> I want something with line. It's, so the bamboo, we can do it like a line for construction. And this is a process, this is good for make this the line, okay? Lolo, ayame, pasa de acá para que te pongan. Pasa, siéntate de acá, pasa de acá. We need three, but we have two now, okay? Please. Okay. So in this case, we, we put one here, and one here, and after, we put this in the middle, and with this, it's going to make very perfect bamboo, okay? So, we need to understand that the material is flexible, okay? And we can make a line with the bamboo with techniques, okay? <laughs> so this is one technique for make a line. If you want a structure very, 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 like, oh, oh the column very good, and if you clean it is like this, ah, it's good. It's good, no, it's like, oh, this, okay? It's very important, this.
So, it is very important to have one here because, you know, it's like thorn. But if you have three, and after, <laughs> you can put triangles here, bamboo pins, or steel, and it's not return, okay? If you don't want to see knots. Okay, the other process is how to make the, the, the curves, okay? So, some bamboos, it's easy to play, it's very flexible for make curve. But when we have very big dimension, and we need, for example, to make this curve, like in the center of the structure, it's impossible, like, to do it, like, ah, I need noise. So the technique is, cut, here, 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 the knot, okay? So, when we are start, we select the bamboo, okay? We have 1,000 bamboo in the place. We need to select the curve, with two curves, with three curves, because you know, something the bamboo have like, ah! So you can do it first to set two. Divide the bamboo, okay, this is good. This is very, very good, like a line. This is with one curve, this is with two curves, this is with three curves, and I select, okay? So, for make the curve, the technique of this is this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that. No problem. Okay, so take the bamboo. Si, paralo. Okay. But one, one is very important. When we are using this technique, you you can put only one. It's very important that you can only put one because one is not strong. It's very easy to break in a structure. You need to put two together, or three, in this way. Two, one on top, and one in the down. Okay? So, we make this technique and check close. As, after we can make a Photoshop, no? With bamboo dolls and glue, and nobody, oh, what happened? It's not like this. You know, the bamboo grows like this, eh? I put them on and on. Okay, so this is a technique for this curve in the center, okay? But it's not one. We can use for this technique only one. And very, very important is this. We could, we have, it's not, no, no, no? The knot. No. 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 I'm sorry. We have the knot. We could all the time in one direction. The knot, I, I could after the knot, after the knot, no, in the middle, because normally when we, para nomás, like break like this but we ha if we could if we could like only one direction all the time and break the knot is like impossible to but if we could the knot you know you understand yes oh i can repeat okay so i'm sorry i will put in this direction so when we are making this technique sometimes breaks okay check No break. It's good. <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, everything is close. Okay. Normally breaks. And so all the time we could in one direction. We have the knot, we could here. We have the knot very near, no? Not like in the middle. All the times in the in the knot. Here, here, here. 
Okay, because it, this is a line of break. The knot is like cap the cap the fever, and it's not like up. Oh, all the bamboo, the middle of bamboo is not in the bamboo now. Okay, you understand? Yeah. I'm sorry for my English. When, when I'm nervous, it's like <laughs> more bad than bad. Okay. Okay. But oh, you understand? Yes. So when we have this technique, we put two here. Okay. And we put like a triangle. So two. Two, 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 and we have this kind of curve. Oh, in other case, come on, Oscar. Oh, can you give me this? Okay. So we put three. In the hotel in file, we have we are making another construction, and we are making with this process with three. So the curve is with three bamboos. We have the curves, but we have two on top and one down. Down? Yes. Below. Below. <laughs> one below, okay? You understand? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Only one, what happened? <laughs> so, in the bamboo we have a lot of techniques. And we need to be able to make fast the construction, no? Because if we have, if we lost a lot of time, for example, cutting with the, the knife, no? With, with the knife, no. with saw. Put that one. Okay. So this is the best machine for cutting a move. But if you cut like this, no. But if you cut like this, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> you need to practice. Just like that, you can practice. Okay, so it's more easy for work. So in the hotel, we go, I go, I go to show, for example, because this is very heavy. The, the in the middle we have a very very heavy structure, and we took it one. It's like break. So we have a triple It's triple it. Tripod. 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 We have a tripod with a pulley, a pulley, and with the ropes. And we we got we can you can learn how to put big structures. With, the, with bamboo and only one pulley, okay? So now we are going to this place and after we come here, and after we come here and we can start working, okay? You have some question now? Yes? Uh, you'll be keeping your joints at alternate position or at the same place? No, you can, it's very important for the redesign. The position is for the redesign, no? You can change, okay? So, we're gonna start first with Pablo and you can learn how to make the bamboo split, okay? Thank you very much. Now my friend, uh, Mr. Agarwal, is going to show us uh, his uh, in machines which are going to give some relief to bamboo carpenters around the world. And, uh, and for the industrial processing also. And these machines are useful for multi-purpose and uh, definitely after you will show the functional, functional uh, machine then we will know. More and, and, and this is uh, the first machine in any bamboo processing. This is called a crosscut machine. Normally, this works well with one HP motor also. And uh, we brought this. Let me introduce ourselves. So we have come from Madhya Pradesh, from Devas, and we are a leading manufacturer of bamboo processing machines in India. And uh, we are suppliers to one of the CFCs in uh, Infra. But through Equity, Equity is our client through which we are supplying in Imphal and these machines are brought for that purpose also. So we'll start with the first machine which is called a crosscut machine. Okay, so I'm just giving you a demo. Okay. 
very soft. So that's how nicely it can be cut. Smooth. Very smooth. Without burrs, you can see. Okay. And this can cut heavy bamboos within seconds. Okay. So, um, so now you can go in two ways after this. You could be making anything with the knots. If you are making anything with the knots, final product, then this should be the second machine, which is called external knot in your machine. Look at the finish you can get out of this machine and then this this is a, again a very sturdy machine, a balanced cutter with good carbide. What is the cost of this one? Same? Less than 40,000. And this one? Less than 30,000 kg. Why I am saying this is there are some factors which will Travel cost is transport is the biggest factor. No, yes. No, no, no. This, this is exclusive of GST transportation access. Okay. So this is a vertical splitter. Okay. So you can show the results in your video. Okay. So, you, so normally the kind of blade you are using, the number of blades, so this is probably 12. You can use 6 also, 14 also, 8 also, 9 also, depends on the kind of width you want. Okay, so width if you are making width cannot be adjusted, but number of blades can be adjusted. So a grill with number of blades. Okay. So we are giving multiple blades along with the machine so that if you require less than 22 mm, you can do it with whatever diameter. Why less than 22 mm? Because this is a round stick machine and uh, it needs less than around 22 mm only. Not 25 mm, not 27 mm. But the next operation for this bamboo is slice. Slice. So this machine is called a heavy duty slicer. It makes slivers. And this blade could be adjusted for any thickness. For Agarbatti sticks, we have set this blade at around 2 mm. What we are getting is a 2mm strip. Okay. Now the next operation after this is this round stick making. 2mm is uh, what is the highest? You can get 10mm also with a different machine. <laughs> no, with this machine you can get uh, thick slivers, 5mm, 6mm, 7mm, 8mm, whatever. It could be easily adjusted. So the next operation is round stick making for agarbatti and for any other thing also. For round stick. Okay. Round stick. Okay. So, um, but this machine has, happens only after. Come, come. We need to have that machine before we get into this one. fine output you can get out of this machine. <laughs> Good for agarbatti and you can make for toothpick, for chopsticks, for blinds. So you have to adjust the cutter. Is it possible to make it? How much big do you want? This size. Yes, you will have a different machine for that. So this size maybe 10 mm, 12 mm. So I will give a different model machine for that, not this machine. This machine is good enough for 5 mm, 6 mm diameter of sticks. Okay, sir. So you have to do it in 2 grams? Yes, you have to do it in 2 grams and polish it. So next operation is sizing and then polishing. I will show you a sizing machine. So uh, we already have a bundle over here. So we will just show you the operation. Better to take it from here. From here, okay. So this is you. You have to make a proper bundle, and then you clamp it properly, and then you start the machine. Okay.
Anyway, so I think he has to do some adjustments. Anyway, this is how you cut. And it, so you yes. make uh, the for agarbatti. Oh, so you do this for agarbatti? Huh? For agarbatti. For agarbatti, you have to set the fixed length. So agarbatti yes. people are very and and so the sellers are very uh, particular about the length of uh, sticks. So they want very fixed length. You can fix any size with this. You can fix any size. Any uh, any size is in diameter. You need to set the settings and you need to change the cutter set. Okay. So next is polish machine. So this is a polishing machine. So after sizing, the next is polishing of sticks. So this is a variable length machine where where when you can adjust this machine up to 14 inches or 16 inches. Normally in agarbatti industry you require 8 inches, 9 inches kind of sticks, and you can uh, fill this chamber up to 40 kgs of sticks. And uh, the time for which you have to run this machine depends on the quality, the input quality and the output quality. Let's run the machine first. Okay. So this is how it goes. We only put in how it goes. Yes. This is the. What is the count for this machine? Depends on the size. So it could be around seventy thousand up to one lakh twenty five thousand with a three times capacity. So depends on the size. This polishing the. Bamboo sticks like this. This is how it is doing. Okay, this is the uh, mechanism. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, um, so that is about agarbatti sticks. So we went like bamboo cutting. Knot removal. I'll tell you, knot removal is good when you are using knot. Otherwise, avoid knot removal. Directly go to vertical splitter. Then you make slices, then you make round stick, then you do sizing, then you polish. Then there is another machine called sharpening machine which sharpens the cutters, which, which we have not displayed over here. So this is a simple set of machines which is required to make agarbatti sticks. So this uh, machines can you also use for with other woods for other purposes? No, no, no. no. So cutting machine can be used for cutting wood, but generally for bamboo, we are processing bamboo for other things like furniture also. You are able to use cross cut, you are able to use slicer, you are able to use knot removal and our round stick machine is a multi-purpose machine where you can make toothpick kind of a stick, 2mm stick or a chopstick kind of a stick or a blind kind of a stick. So these are multi-purpose machines definitely but, but limited up to bamboo. So your main market is bamboo, uh, agarbatti? Not agarbatti, we will show you the furniture making machine slats, bamboo treatment plant, body slivers. This is a parallel splitter. So this is good for making uh, parallel splits, which will be four by plane after this. Parallel split. Parallel splits. I'll show you the process. So you can see. This is the oh, kind yeah. of split we get. This goes into a four side planer. So okay. we'll go in the four side and we'll check that. And, and I'll show you the process when we shoot from here. We'll record this. So this is the machine required if you want to make a four side plane strip. Oh, four side plane. Yeah, after this we do a four side this is useful for furniture. Furniture, boards. Okay. Boards. Bamboo board making. Board, 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 board. Yeah, plywood making. And then to brush, so many things. Oh, bam bamboo plywood. Yeah, plywood. This plywood. is the kind of uh, finish you get with this machine. So the drawback of this machine is this would be a little slow. But the good part is it avoids all useless part and gives you the real good part. Okay. And this is all very adjustable, so you can make a 10 mm wide uh, split also and you can make a 35 mm wide split also. So this is the first machine the plywood guys need? Yes, so to say. So plywood are actually not of one type but actually of four types. So a strip board would require a machine like this. Okay. Will I turn that? Yes. Then I... This is polishing the plywood, I guess. That. This is polishing? This the is a four side planer. Four side planer, huh? This is a four side planer. You can shoot from here, not from here. This will be a real
What is the maximum mm you can get? You can get 35 mm also. The same machine. The same machine. You can get 10 mm also. And the thickness you can go from 4 mm up to 25 mm. This is called a chain splitter, so this is a long splitter oh, machine. Okay. 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 वो सोच लीजिए पांच फैमिली मिलके घर बनाना चाहते हैं फर्क पर इंडिविजुअली इसके लिए इकोनॉमिकली वायबल होगा क्या ये सी बेसिकली दिस मशीन्स आर मल्टी पर्पस सो यू कैन मेक अगरबत्ती स्टिक्स आल्सो फोर सेट प्लेनर थिंग आल्सो यू कैन स्प्लिट आल्सो एंड समबडी हैज टू हैव अ सीएफसी काइंड ऑफ सेटअप इन दैट विलेज और समबडी हैज टू ओन दिस मशीन्स एंड गिव एंड प्रोडक्ट टू सो मेनी हाउस होल्डर्स बट with these machines you are able to reduce your task by 50 times